Welcome to another edition of Working with Some APIs. Now, in today's video, we're going to be learning how to work with an API that lets us get recipes. Why are we doing that? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm doing more cooking than I've ever done in my life. I am constantly looking up recipes because, you know, I'm bored in the house. And I'm in the house bored, and I'm doing a lot of cooking while I'm bored. So now that I'm doing a lot of cooking, I'm looking for recipes. We can find an API that will let us look up our very own recipes and use it in our application. And I believe whenever I want to, the thing that inspires me to make applications are things that I'm going to use in my own life. Like that time I made a detention application. I was having so much trouble making, giving detentions. Let's make an application for it. And now I need recipes. Let's use an API that gets us some recipes. All right. So first, you're going to end up going to this website that says Edamom. All right, this is an API that has a lot of different functionality. You'll see they do nutrition analysis, recipe licensing, food database lookup. But what we're going to be doing is the recipe search. That's the API that we want uh, want to use. And you'll see here we could search over two million different recipes, and it gives you all sorts of great information. It tells you about like how many calories are in it, all the ingredients, how to cook it, a link to the actual one, images, all sorts of great stuff that we're going to use. So right now, you guys are going to sign up. Just put all your information here. You are going to be a developer. You're going to agree to it. Once you've done that, sign up. All right. And then, oops, I'm already signed in. Go over here and sign into your account. All right. Now, obviously, I already have my information, so I'm going to sign in. Great. Now, once you're here, you want to go to click on Get API Key Now. Remember, API Key is your personal identifier, so we're going to be using that today. So go to Get API Key Now, and we're going to create a new application. What we're doing is recipe search API. So we're going to call this, well, you can call this whatever you want. I'm calling this university prep recipe uh, application. And the description here is, you know, blah. You can put whatever you want. Okay. And we're going to create the application. Okay. Now, what you'll get two things you will get a application ID and application key. All right. The first thing you want to do is copy and paste the application ID. We will be using this today. We haven't done this in the past, but we will be using it today. So go to your script.js and just like before, we're going to call this let app uh, ID equal and copy and paste that in. And by the way, I'm going to be typing really fast today. We have a lot to do in this application. Um, and we're going to say let. So feel free to pause and then application key. We want to do this that dash. I don't know why that's there. You do not want that. So we're going to say let app API key equal great. Okay. So we just save that information so we don't have to keep looking it up. It's there. It's saved in our variables. We're, we're looking good. Okay. Okay. Now that we've got that going, uh, we're going to go back to our dashboard. Nope. And we're going to go back to just click back, 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 back back okay yeah this is where i want to be ah documentation we're using the food nope that's not what we're using we're using the recipe search api now this is what has all the information about how to use it okay and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a second but before we really get into the api today because i think we're pretty good with using apis the real part of the point of this whole video is to really make a good looking website like how do we use apis to make beautiful websites and integrate it with uh, Bootstrap so we have something that looks professional. All right. A lot of you are doing a great job with that in your last few projects, but let's up the game a little bit, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're really going to change things up on our uh, API template uh, uh, right here on Glitch. We're, we're going to just like blow this thing up. So first thing we're going to do is let's look up Bootstrap, Bootstrap, and try to keep up with me here, guys. All right. We're going to go to Get Started. And the first thing you do is once you've got started, you want to copy this link for the CSS. You're going to put that in the head. I usually put that right above my own CSS. In fact, that's the standard way of doing it. And then we're going to take this JavaScript because we will need that for our, our application. And we're going to put that right here. All right. So this is good. And if it doesn't look good to you, format it. Ooh, and now it looks really pretty. Great. Oh, and the last thing is, uh, let's change the title of our web page to R Recipe API. Okay, you know, just a little nice touch, so it, it changes up here. See, looks good. Now the next thing is, I want this to have a nice nav bar. So let's go to Components, 
And now that we've imported our uh, Bootstrap library, let's uh, let's get ourselves a nice little nav bar. Uh, okay, let's do a little search here. Ooh, that looks good. No, no, no. Yes, that's the one I want. I'm gonna grab this nav bar. Bing, bang. And instead of having this H1 with the API template, let's just delete that out. We don't need that. And right under the body tag, let's copy and paste that in. Format it so it looks pretty again. And let's see how that looks. Okay, that's that's looking pretty good. And let's delete out that CSS because you saw there's like space around it. Oh yeah, that looks. Mm, mm. And uh, I'm gonna let you guys actually customize this a little bit on your own time. But the only thing I really want to change here is instead of saying navbar in the top left hand corner, this is or you know it says the class of navbar brand. Let's change this to recipe. And now it says recipe over here. And you could change these things at will. I believe that you could do it. Now also, you'll see that this looks really ugly. You know, it just looks ugly. I hate it. Might be the worst thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, I think we're going to get rid of that. But before we do, let's actually add in a, a carousel to this so it looks a little bit nicer. You know, like I said, when you land on a web page, you always want that splash of like, what is this website? We want to show the user that there's food. So let's go grab ourselves a carousel. Carousels are real classy things. Um, and since I'm actually going to have one picture of my carousel today, let's just get this really simple one. If you want to have many, that's great. Good for you. Hmm. Do I want more than one? No, I don't want more than one. Let's not, let's not be too fancy. So I'm just gonna grab this first one right under the nav. This is my closing nav tag. Let's just put that in there. Format it so it looks pretty again. And you'll see there's still nothing there because I didn't add the image. So let's Google images. Nope, let's Google the word food. Okay, images. Ooh, that's a great picture of food. Copy image address. Oh, now that one looks really good. Mm, maybe something like that. Mm, I don't know. Ooh, that, that I kind of like this one for some reason. I don't know. Um, let's grab this. We'll go over here for our source on the first image tag inside of this carousel. We're going to change that. And you see these two other divs that says carousel, carousel items which right here. We're only doing one picture, so let's delete those out. So we only have one carousel item right here. I said I was going to be moving fast. I wasn't lying. Ooh, see, now our website's looking like, this is like, we're looking like pros now. We're looking real. Now, the last thing is this, like I said, looks ugly. So we're going to take that out. I'm going to show you how to spruce that up a little. See where it says input group? Let's grab some more inputs. And I'm, you'll see there's all kinds of different things you could do here. The one I'm looking for is this guy, right? Where it's like an input with like a button next to it. That's going to be our search. You'll see that this has all four of them. So we want the second one down here. Let's grab that. And let's delete our input and our button. So you see where it says input and button? Leave the content. We're going to grab that format so it looks good again. And let's see how that looks. Looks OK, but you see how it goes all the way across? We can change that. So there's a few things I'm going to change. Instead of the placeholder being recipient's username, I'm going to say search recipe. OK, that looks good. Um, for my button, you'll see that the ID was changed to button add on two. We want to actually put that back to what it was last time. So before the ID was search, um, you'll see in script, remember like we do query selector search. Let's change the ID of our button back to search. And uh, what, here's a little trick. To make it not go all the way across, we're going to say this call six, meaning I want this to take out six out of 12 columns. We've never talked about this, but whatever, it's a bootstrap thing. We're going to say offset by three. And you'll see that that kind of moves things around. That looks awesome. Cool. And you know what? Um, you'll see that it's kind of stuck. Like you see that we need some space there. So let's give a little space to this div right here. So this is a input group. That's the class. So let's go to style. I told you I'm moving fast. I wasn't lying to you guys. Let's do margin top 50 pixels. And let's do margin bottom 50 pixels. Okay. All right. So with all that said, we are now ready to like actually get started. So that button, but bot bottom, bottom. But all right. So now we have a pretty good looking website, right? It just doesn't do anything. So when I press this button, I want people to be able to search like for a recipe. And when they press the button, like recipes pop up. 
So we have to do this. We only have five minutes because I have a 15 minute like, uh, you know, limit on my thing. So I'm gonna have to go through this really quickly, but we'll get some recipes up there. So first thing, this API first tells you your endpoints. Now you might remember that this is the path or endpoint is the, like what we're gonna be using. So we're gonna grab this, and this is what's gonna go into our, our fetch request. So if you go over here, you're fetching, this is where we're fetching from. We're doing our search functionality. Now, when you have to start putting in parameters, and whenever you look up the documentation, the parameters are things that are required and not required. If something's required, that means you have to add it in. Now these things star mean that like, yes, you need to pick one of these two to put in, but these two right here, the app ID and the app key have to be added in to make your request. So when you start your request, you're gonna say this. We're gonna say question mark, all right? And this is where we start putting in our parameters. So the first thing we're gonna say is, let's see, the first thing they require, let's look at the documentation, is the app ID. So we're gonna go like this, app ID equals, and let's interpolate it because we saved it here, app ID. Okay. Now that's not the only thing that's required. So if you go here, it also needs the app key. So let's grab this. We luckily save that as well. Now, before you move on to the next thing, you say and, and now we're gonna put app key equals, and let's interpolate our API key. So API key, I know that's a little confusing. This says API key, this says app key, whatever, it's interchangeable. So now we have the two required things to use this, but it's not searching anything up. So what I want to do is make it so I can search up like a certain kind of food. Now, there's all types of things you can read into here. The one we want to look through is this, is Q. That means query. Like what are we going to look for? We're going to query chicken, pasta, pizza. What we're going to do here is and Q. And this is where you put what the user looks for. We're just going to hard code it in. So right now I'm just going to put pizza. Okay. So let's see if we get a response when we do this that everything's good to go. So we'll go inspect console and let's press the button oops but i can kind of see here that i forgot my dollar sign where it says app id so i didn't interpolate correctly russian man i don't have that much time so we're going to do that boom bam and look at that so we got a response 200 we're good to go so let's move on to step two which is to go like this we'll say let data let's go get that data we'll say await uh, response.json, we're going to console.log that data, and let's just make sure we get some recipes back. Press the button, look at that, I see some information coming back. <laughs> All right, so right here it says hits, those are your recipes. So you'll see that we got 10 back, um, and we got, let's see what we got here. We got a recipe, we got a pizza dough recipe, cool. Tells us the image, URL, it gives us all corns with great things, tells us the calories, tells us the ingredients. You could look through this and have a lot of fun. Like I said, I gotta move. So now that we got the data back, let's do something with that data. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna say this. We're gonna go use API data, our function where we do things. We're gonna send the data over. And here is where we're going to like do something. So what we want to do is, as always, we want to add these recipes into the content section of our ID, of, of our website, right? We still have our div with the content, so let's do that. So we're going to say document.query selector dot, nope, hashtag content dot inner HTML, and we're going to set that equal to, and this is where it gets a little crazy, back ticks, okay? And I want you to put a little space here. And now we're gonna actually put these in cards. All right, we want the cards to show up. So if you go here, go get this card right here. And we want this first one. Grab this right here. Go back and paste it in. Now, this is where I wanna like, like I wanna format this card. Right now this is just a generic card. But like you'll see it, this card has like an image. It has like a title. That's where we're gonna put the data in here. So. The first thing I want to do is I want the image to pop up because it does send back an image. So let's click this button first. See, we get all this stuff. Don't worry about that error. And like I said, if you want to get the image, you got to click through here, click through here, and the image address is right here. Let's right click that, copy property path, and let's just go like this, interpolate. So we're going to do dollar sign, boom, boom, data, 
dot. You see if the double quotes, take those out. 